Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Michelle here with the Unicorn Spit. I am here today to show you how to take a plain old glass top table that you find at thrift store everywhere for like 10 and $15. Nobody wants them. Everybody overlooks them. And I'm going to show you how to turn them into what looks like polished stone. I'm going to take a second real fast and pull the top out for you. Let me put my peacock feathers down. So, as you know, <clears throat> the glass pops out of these so easy. They just lift right out. I'm going to show you today how to turn it into what looks like, if you can see this, it's like a beautiful type of labradorite that you would have in a piece of jewelry. I'm even going to show you how to go through the details of putting this beautiful gold veining into them. And it's so safe and it's so good, you can't scratch it off. So I'm also going to show you how to seal it. So the tabletops at the bottom, I did a live on how to do those very easily as well. You can find that in our group. If you go on Facebook, we have a group full of tutorials, not only by me, but by all of us spitters out there. But let's get started to show you how to do these. Very simple, very easy. Just gonna grab my camera and take you along with me. Here we go. Ah! So, also, we are going to be having a contest. So I didn't wanna say this everywhere, but here, Franny, can you hand me our secret thing? I've been holding off on showing you guys this. Can you see what this is? R-O-S-W-E-L-L. -L. That's right, we have Roswell. And we are going to have a contest with sharing this post to all your favorite groups. Whoever shares it the most, whoever shares it just once or twice, we're gonna go through and we're gonna pick a winner who's gonna receive, actually we're gonna have two winners receive a free bottle of Roswell just by sharing our post today to some of your favorite painted furniture groups just to give some other people an idea on how to do this so share 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 for your Roswell all right guys we're gonna pull you into the other room and I have Frances with me she is going to be reading me all of your questions that you may have um, so hopefully now we're not in real time so there's a little bit of a time delay not too much but a pretty good one and um, it's going, she's going to try her best. Woo, that's pretty high. But I think that's a pretty good view. Can you guys see pretty well? She's gonna try her best to tell me um, when somebody has a question, because I can't read them from this far away. You guys are super far. All right, you guys, I'm gonna show you how to get started on your project. Um, let's see if I get it in the picture good. That's what I'm going for, yes. This looks white, right? Well. I have a sheet of glass on here. In order to prepare this sheet of glass, it was very, very simple. I just cleaned it with some alcohol. No Mod Podge first, none of that. What's nice is that you're gonna be working on the bottom side of the glass. So you're gonna be doing things in reverse, which also makes it so that this glass isn't gonna to be touched, it's not gonna be scraped, it's not gonna go through the day-to-day -day, um, exposure of being scratched and hurt and, but we're still going to um, keep it protected so what you see here is a piece of glass I just have it down on a piece of white paper so that you guys can see the design that I'm going for in order to do the purple and amethyst or the amethyst and turquoise what I'm calling um, like a peacock labradorite you are going to want to first start by getting these little spray bottles. You can get them at the dollar store. They're very inexpensive. Oh, Lizzie's coming out to play with us. That's my cat, Lizzie Borden. <laughs> Isn't it funny? All right, so you're gonna wanna take your unicorn spit and you're gonna wanna add some of it to your bottle. And then you're gonna wanna do about five parts water to it. The more water you get, the more translucent it'll be, but you are gonna want it to spray. So, for the black, there's also different ways to do it. When it comes to the black, I like to do little lines like that. As you can see, I'm getting those streak marks, right? So I get those little streak marks going, but then if you make it closer and you turn the tip, then you'll also get a spray. Now we're doing this backwards. So I 
also did the same thing with my Purple Hill Mag Majesty. It's one part unicorn spit to five to six parts water, depending upon how translucent you want it to be. So this is where I'm gonna do my bolts. I'm gonna open it up nice and big of my amethyst coming through. Yes, this is a messy little situation, so make sure you give yourself a little bit of a, a backdrop that you're not gonna mind um, getting, getting dirty because it does it sprays. The next color that we're gonna be using, and I'm gonna put this on the spray, so it's not gonna be um, real. These are kind of like doing bolts. We're gonna go with the mist pattern now. All I have here, this is a patina. This is a color we're getting ready to come out with. You can make it yourself at home as well. It's one part or one part dragon's belly to three parts zia teal. I mixed that up and then mixed it as well with up to five parts water. So we're just gonna go over that and we're gonna cover it pretty good. Look at that, scared the cat right off. Ha <laughs> We're gonna give that a nice spray over the whole thing. Then I like to come in with a little bit of our Blue Thunder. It's also diluted with up to five parts of water. And I'm gonna put it on a spray as well so that it can just zap right through there. Here we go. So there's our blue. And we're gonna come in with a little bit of our Zia Till, also diluted with five parts water. I'm gonna put it on a spray possibly. You have to make sure that you keep your tips wet because if they sit for too long, they tend to dry out. Oh, and I had just checked them today to make sure they were going to spray. Oh, there we go. Michelle, she went. Thea just asked, one part dragon's belly, three part zia till for patina. Yes, for patina. So you're going to have three parts of zia till and one part of your dragon's belly, which is the very dark green, to make your homemade patina color, which is also the color I like to use when doing my little, um, my frames and doing that distressing, that vertigrees color, I love it. So I decided to go ahead and put it in bottles for you guys, but if you're like me, I like to mix and make my own colors. All right, now I'm going in with a little Navajo. So this is Navajo Jewel diluted as well get our pump in now it, it, again you guys you want to make sure that you keep your lids closed you want to get them wet it doesn't take very long for them to start clogging up because unicorn spit does dry extremely fast boy this one really got clogged up on me ain't that a stink <laughs> all right here we go come on buddy Give me one second, I'm gonna try to just. All right, got her open. Sometimes you just squeeze the bottle and it'll help out a lot. So now we're just going to put that on the spray. So we're gonna mist that down. There we go. And that's where we get that deep teal color coming through is with that Navajo. It's a darker turquoise, almost to a teal. Just reminds me all of that New Mexico jewelry I grew up being in love with. So we get that going. And remember, you're gonna wanna spray in the direction that you want your stone to move. Okay, so it grows in a vein, you wanna spray in a vein. Let me go back in with a little bit more of the blue thunder because I really love the blue thunder on this it just there's a certain stone called the lapiece I believe it's called and it I've always just really loved it a lot I'm gonna come back in with our block to give it another little mist and don't worry about doing all of it never have to worry about getting the entire thing covered because we can come through with a little gold and it'll do its own vining. Doing a couple little extra mists of the um, Purple Hill Majesty. And now I have my water bottle. With my water bottle, 
I put it on a mist and I mist from far away and up above. If you shoot it on an angle, it will make your unicorn spit spray in a direction. Now you're gonna wanna get it pretty, pretty wet, not too wet. Now you can leave it like this and let it dry for a very, um, I'm gonna try to bring it up close for you guys. Hold on, give me one second here. All right. So if you guys can see, let me turn my camera around. All right, guys. So as you can see, we already have this beautiful stone pattern going on. It does look like there should be a, a mermaid swimming through there. It is gorgeous. It is absolutely beautiful. But then if you wanted to give it a little extra movement, you have a couple of different ways you can go with this. You can leave it like this, or you can give it a push. See it move? Then you can go the opposite way as well, just to make it coincide with one another. You see it going? Isn't that pretty? And then you just let it dry. All right, guys? You let it dry all the way. I ended up taking my blow dryer to it because I have no patience. You can also put a small space heater in front of it to go it really, really fast. But if you just let it dry on its own, I tend to think that it does better because you don't have the wind and the air blowing the colors around and it's going to allow it to maintain this beautiful fractionating that you see here. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks like real stone. When you're done with that, I'm gonna take you back in and show you the next step here. Turn my little camera around. All right. I'm gonna bring you into my office. I do everything on my desk. That's what I love about Unicorn Spit. You can get it on your desk, you can do it in your home, and you're not gonna mess anything up because it washes off so easily. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and lower my camera so you guys can see my little work spot here. I'm gonna turn on my little extra light I have. All right, let's see. Do. I love my tripod my brother made me, you guys. Super awesome. All right, guys, here we go. Hopefully you can see this. This is one that I have already completed. All right, I'm gonna try to scoot this back, get you guys a real good view. Nope, not good enough view. Let's see if I pull it up higher. Yeah, that's a good view. Okay, let's bring it down. <laughs> Big brother just tuned in. Hey, Tony. My brother's on, everybody. Say hi to my brother, Toe. Give me a second here. I'm trying to stabilize my tripod. Okay. I'm going to bring it down low. All right, guys. So here's your next step, okay? Your next step is this. You guys have good lighting there? You guys see that I have, this is one that I let dry and um, I really mixed it up. And if you can see, there's two different variations going here because if you look at the other side, you have two choices. Let's see if you can get this and I get some light on it. You can see it good. You can? Yeah. All right. So here we go. Here's your variations you have. You can leave it opaque like this or you can leave it a little frosty looking. And if you look at what I'm looking at here, if you go, I use a product, Tongue Oil Finish. You can use Watco. You can also use the other product that I really like. What is it called? Formities? Form Bees. Form Bees. Form Bees. Form Bees. Yeah, I just happen to have the Watco. Now this is Tongue Oil Finish. It's not pure tongue oil. It does dry relatively quickly but it is a penetrating oil. And what I find when using it, you give yourself the opportunity to have two different looks. You can either have a look that is more, see if I can get this light flare off of there, a more pastel look to your stone, or you can have yourself a, a deeper color to your stone. Because what the oil does, it penetrates into your unicorn spit and gives it a very deep look, 
or you can leave it as is with the chalky finish. <clears throat> the choice is up to you. You just wanna make sure that it's completely dry before you start this next step. So once it's dry, you have, you turn it over. This is where we do our veining. Our veining is very simple. If you go to any of your craft stores, nuts and bolts, you can pick up one of these little sets of X-Acto blades. You can also use your regular X-Acto blade. Um, you can pick up this set of X-Acto blades for about $5 and it comes with an assortment of different little um, razor tips that you can use. The one that I tend to like the most is this medium one. It seems to give me the best um, effect. So what you're gonna wanna do in order to do the gold veining, you're gonna find the flow that your 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 stone is, is going, all right? Yes, it's not stone, but you know what I'm saying. And you're gonna wanna start on the edge, and you're just gonna wanna take your blade, and you're just going to want to do some little lines. See how it just blows right off? And some big and some small. Remember, we're going for a very natural look of stone here. There we go. Almost like a little tree branch. You can get creative with it. I would suggest doing what I did and uh, take a look online at different veining pa uh, patterns that you find in the natural stone. Um, it's very simple. There's really no mistakes. Um, just be sure to use um, variable thicknesses. So by twisting your X-Acto blade back and forth, so I'm gonna show you like sideways would give you really thick ones. But then if you use the tip, it'll give you really thin, precise ones. So once you get your veining in that you really love, I'm gonna do a couple and see that it comes off and starts here. And of course you can also do it right over the other side as well. There's no problem with that. Here we go. And I noticed that it, it tends to kind of start from a big thick area and go thin. So once you get that done, all you're gonna do is go and take it outside. There's two different options. Personally, I'm a gold girl. I noticed that the Rust-Oleum metallic finish gives you a true metallic color and not some type of satin. It looks like gold leaf whenever you use this. Not only does it go in and do these little highlights here and there, but anywhere you it, it, it ran kind of thin, you're gonna get an opaque gold coming through as well. And if you're not into gold, you can also use um, Krylon Looking Gloss, which is that mirror finish, and that gives you a really beautiful effect. It's like the most gleaming silver you'd ever seen. It's absolutely beautiful. And you know, what's really cool, guys, if you wanted to, you don't have to do the veining. You could write a word like love or joy or your last name. Just put a stencil down and just kind of scrape it out. And you could do something like that as well. When you're done doing this, you're going to go ahead and do two coats. We got a quick question. Oh, we got a question. How do you apply the tongue oil finish? Um, the tongue oil finish was That's very Anita. simple, Anita. Um, all I did was take my tongue oil, believe it or not, and pour it on there, a nice little pool, and just rubbed it on very thin and let it dry for a couple of hours. It does take a couple hours for it to cure, but it's totally worth it. It really protects that finish and makes it so it doesn't scratch um, as much. But to get it to really not scratch, you guys, it... Um, you don't have to. You could just leave this clear or you could just leave it like this if you wanted to put a light underneath it and let it shine. That would be really cool. But this um, Verithane polyurethane that we have at our local store, it's for interior and it's for heavy use formula. This is a high gloss. Um, of, of course, you could use a satin or whatever, but this is their oil-based um polyurethane and it really takes a licking and keeps on ticking. I used about two coats of this 
on our tables tops and it's not going anywhere um what is really cool about this hey franny will you please pop the glass out of that one so i can show everybody thank you all right so if you look at the back of this one um now polyurethane does have a tendency to stick so just to keep it on the safe side i put a little bead of um, tape around it. You never see it, um, but it made it so that whenever I do want to pop this out, it's not going to stick to the frame of the wood. And what's also really cool about doing these is say, you know, next month, next week, next year, you know, 10 years from now, you change your color palette. As for me, I really fell in love with the whole peacock palette in my house. Everything is purple and turquoises and blacks and just such royal colors. Um, that's why we have our triple crown jewel collection. It is those colors. What's cool is that, say you do change your style, you do change you know, the way that you um, wanna decorate your home. Even with the sealers on it that you see, all you have to do is take a little bit of water, all right? If it has the sealer on it, you're gonna wanna put it in water overnight by just putting some wet towels over it. Um, ooh, where did my little sponge go that I had? If you're not satisfied with your outcome or you wanna start over or you wanna change you guys are free to be able to just wash them off and start anew. Now, once you get your two um, coats of your polyurethane on there, it is going to be a little more difficult to get it off. You have to let it soak overnight in water or just take a little razor blade and scrape it all off. Either way you want to do it, but this makes it so that you can always change your design. You can always change your style with these glass tops. You're not stuck with a certain color pattern or you have to go buy new furniture. No, you make your furniture conform to you. And it's also really cool if you wanted to do something that was, say, for the holidays or something for fall or something for winter, you can always change it just so easily. You guys, it takes less than five hours to do each one of these little glass tops and I just do both of them at the same time so they look they look alike. But that's it, you guys. Um, there's no real, um, it's not very complicated. It's not very hard. It's all about just, um, using that unicorn spit to move its way around and mingle in the colors that you like and you're not stuck with the purples the greens and the turquoises you can do blacks you can do reds you can do all the colors that you love um whatever fits your taste there's no limits to it you guys can do it and these tables are so inexpensive super inexpensive i got both of those lane tables down at the thrift store for ten dollars a piece i couldn't believe it and i turned them into what looks like like jeweled tops i mean this is absolutely beautiful you guys these are my colors oh, i love them so much but who knows maybe i'll move up to another color soon all right guys well hopefully i inspired you to um our latecomers are coming in. Hopefully I inspired you to do something unique and original and, you know, recycle. Take advantage of the fact that nobody wants those tables. But now, everybody's going to want them because they're going to be super duper cool. And don't forget, you could also give them a stained glass top by doing a design or a galaxy. There's all types of different ways. I just wanted to show you guys how to do a faux polished stone. Now remember, we are still having our contest, so our contest is going to be um, share this um, live video to all of your groups that you're members of that you think would really benefit from learning how to do this on glass. And we're going to go through all the um, people who shared our post and two of the people who decided to share 
and uh, help us out on get the word out on recycling these old glass tables, we're gonna send you a gift of the Roswell, which is the lime green that everybody has really, really been loving and wanting. And yes, it's also gonna be in the concentrate as well where you can dilute it with just a ton of water. I mean, all depends on what you wanna use it on. So, all right guys, well, I appreciate you tuning in today. Um, I really hope I inspired you to do something really, really cool. Um, again, I'm gonna show you one last time what these tabletops look like whenever they're um, they're done, so you guys can get a real good view of what you guys can do. It's so easy, it's so simple, so simple. All right, let's turn them around one more time so you guys can see. I'm gonna turn my camera. All right, you guys, here's one here. I wanted you to see this one. This one turned out really cool. This is the one that I didn't do the zigzag back and forth on that one. I just let it dry the way that it was. I thought it turned out really cool. And see where that gold is coming out where the unicorn spit wasn't really thick. It's very meek and modest and just kind of runs in there. And of course you can also do unicorn spit on the outside of your glassware. All I did with this one is after I let it drip while I was upside down, I sealed it with some um, spray lacquer, high gloss spray lacquer. Hi Lizzie. And don't forget, you can also use unicorn spit in the same fashion on your fabrics. And yes, I did do that pillow. Unicorn spit will also stain your wood. I know, Simon, I'll get that to you soon. I just love staging with it. But this one's my favorite, you guys. I really love it. This glass, the veining, the gold veining, and all of that. Maria told me that um, gold and feng shui brings wealth and happiness and security to your home. So I've always loved gold. So now maybe I understand why we're having such good security in our home now. But this one is my absolute favorite. And again, if you go to our Facebook page, um, you can see how I took the bases, or not the Facebook page, our Facebook group. One of the gals will um, do a link share on our group on here, I'm sure. Um, I showed you guys how to take these old tables. It was like this chestnutty color, and I turned it into this beautiful rustic dark color, so simply with no sanding involved. So, guys, all right. Well, I appreciate you tuning in with me today. I hope you guys have learned something new. I'm always trying to... Um, get your creative juices flowing and I hope this one really did it for you because I love it. Reduce, reuse, recycle and turn it into art. All right guys, I'm gonna let you go. Now don't forget, always let your creative juices flow. Goodbye.